Quinten Lambrecht. You can find me on Twitter and all other social media platforms. This is almost a, almost a 360 view, so I'll try to make some eye contact with you guys, but uh, can't promise anything. Um, you can summarize me in four blue coins. First of all, I'm, I'm from Brussels. Uh, secondly, I study political science, strategic communication, EU communications. I'm a communication advisor, um, currently working as a freelancer, um, mostly in EU communications, but also some uh, private clients uh, working on video concepts, uh, writing, and so on. Um, also an activist in my spare time, and that's why I, I think Therese and I met uh, a couple of uh, yeah, years ago, I think already. Um, I'm an I'm um, um, activating, let's say, Brussels uh, for a better uh, sustainable mobility future. Um, what I'd like to tell you is the following. I'd like to focus a bit on communication strategy. Um, then I'm focusing on, on a couple of digital tools and um, how you can get your message across. And then hopefully I can also reply to some of your, your questions uh, later on. Now, a communication strategy. Uh, who, is, who has a communication background here? <coughs> three, three people, four, four people, great. So probably for some of you this will be uh, a bit of repetition, uh, but I'll try to keep it as interesting as possible. Um, first of all, a communication strategy always starts with your, with your goals, of course. Eh? What's, your, what's your USP? What's your unique selling proposition that you want to be uh, communicating about? What are your <coughs> objectives? What do you want to communicate? What do you want people to do? Do you want to inform them? Do you want to make them aware of something? Do you want to engage them in something? Do you want to reactivate them um, during, a, dur during a course of time? So it's, it's quite important to get those things clear at the start. And of course, are your objectives smart? What is What, what could smart mean? Specific, measurable, attainable, yeah. realistic, yeah. perfect, great, very good, uh, indeed. So you have to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, realistic, or um, and also uh, timely. And um, so those are the communication objectives that you need to be setting uh, at the start. Now, secondly, think about your audience. Who is your target audience? Start with the low-hanging fruit. Probably your fir the low-hanging fruit would be communicating towards um, towards your peers, towards people that you're working with today. Um, but then start working on building persona and analyze their journey. How do you build persona is to um, divide your target audiences in different set of people with different backgrounds, with different ages, with um, even, even uh, gender. Uh, different gender, and then analyze what kind of journey uh, they would be they would be making, um, you know, uh, in in a, in a certain uh, in a certain part of their life, and how you want to be communicating in those steps of the life. I mean, a good example, for example, um, for example, is um, advertising um, something on a on a, on a tram. Um, people that take the tram. If you want to reach them, they'll probably look in their look on their phone first. When can I take my tram? So s maybe a, e even a, a small set of advertising can already be included in your app as a sort of push notification. Then people walk towards the tram by, for example, using a beacon uh, technology that is connected to Bluetooth. You can you can um, hand them a second message. A third message could be at the tram stop. They could see a poster. They could see an interactive uh, small video on a, on a, on a screen. And the fourth step, of course, would be to communicate them in the tram and to let them um, to let them do something or or let them scratch out something or let them take a brochure or a folder. So that think about the journey that your potential target audience uh, might be might be taking. And of course, and that's actually should be doing this from the start. And um, I, I derive this from uh, from the value proposition um, scheme. Is what do you want to do with your product? Um, how do you want to communicate uh, towards people that will be using your product or or your or your service? What are the gains and pains of people in your target audience? And how can you 
come up with game creators and pain relievers to, you know, to solve those issues. Uh, for example, people are not finding the correct cycling routes uh, in Brussels, so it's a real pain to get from A to B in a, in a proper manner, in a safe manner in Brussels. That's kind of a pain. What are the game creators that you guys have been working on, or some of you have been working on for the, ca uh, for the past weeks? Is to create an integrated app that helps people to get on the regional cycling roads in time and safe. This is the big picture. I just explained that. But please have a look at it. I mean, it's not a, it's not a communication tool. It's more like a product development tool. <coughs> it's something that can help you to identify within your target audiences what will be the gains and the pains of people using a certain product or using a certain service and what kind of game creators, or what kind of solutions can we bring and what kind of pain relievers within a certain or um, a specific product or a specific service can we provide to make it even better. Now messaging. Messaging towards audiences should be different. Look at the, the, the customer journey, look at the uh, people's journey, but also um, to um, look at your different persona that you've been building. Uh, I'm, I'm now giving a, a fantastic example about pizza. Um, how do you want people to convince to come to your pizza place? Probably for youngsters that would be share a moment together. Uh, for old people that would be try pizza, it's exotic. My grandmother has never ever tried pizza. Um, pasta was a great in invention for her when she tried it with, uh, with cheese and, and, um, and black sugar. So business people, we have takeaway. So these are three different messages that you can <coughs> convince people to consume your product or to consume your service in, um, in three different ways for three different target audiences. Media, on which platforms will you use your message? Of course, when your team choose channels based on, on expertise, but also based on your target audience. Probably 70-year-old people will not be on Snapchat or Instagram. Uh, they will rather like to have a, uh, a folder in, uh, in their mail. And of course, do the right mix. Uh, try to um, use your, your channels as, um, you know, as, um, as, as efficiently as possible and do it uh, within um, the capacity of your team. And of course, we come to the famous uh, peso uh, mix, the paid, the earned, the shared, and the owned media that you have to think about. Does anyone know what these are? Except Frederick? <laughs> Great, cool. I'm going to teach him something. Paid, of course, would be advertising, all sorts of advertising. Facebook, Twitter advertising, LinkedIn advertising, could be Google AdWords where you can um, pay to be seen, of course. More and more, definitely on social, <coughs> it's becoming the case. For example, on, on Facebook, you get around 7% of organic reach uh, when you post. So it might be a good investment to, um, yeah, to put a little bit of money into your, uh, into your communication, in that communication channel. Shared media would be, of course, your social media channels and word of mouth. People are talking about you on social media. Earned media, well, there you have to kick ass in media relations, for example, write interesting articles that provide enough um, added value for journalists to, um, yeah, to consume your story. Blogger relations, it's a completely different, uh, different way of, 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 uh, of communicating to, to bloggers, is to convince them that something's in there, in it for them. I mean, they can have, for example, the beta, uh, version of, of your product release or what brands usually do um, you know bloggers get bribed with uh, all kinds of nice uh, goodies uh, and, and free stuff and of course the influencer and ambassador relations what's the difference between influencers and ambassadors cool ambassadors already love your brand so th that's the low-hanging fruit. You can reactivate them to um, to get your message across. And of course, influencers are the are the most difficult ones to to actually convince them that your brand is something worth collaborating with. 
And of course, the owned media. We're thinking about websites, blogs, <coughs> and all types of other content which should be directed towards your target audience and a different persona. Could be a newsletter, um, could be uh, push notifications, whatsoever. Now that you're here, um, stand out with branding. Develop nice logos, devel develop a nice house style. Um, I mean, that's often a problem for solutions that are well thought, but they just don't sell. And I think that's also for you guys a big lesson that you have to work on that visual uh, communication approach as well in your, uh, in your communication. Provide snacks, not these kind of snacks. Um, in, your, in your communication, try to tease as much as possible. Use social media channels, use those fast moving uh, communication channels as a way to tease people to go to um, to, to look further on your menu and to go to the website, for example, or to order um, a white paper or to order a brochure. So use those quick and, and snappy communication tools like Snapchat, like Twitter, like small animations or videos um, as a sort of snack to convince people to go to the main meal and that would be your, your website or long reads or, or, or longer content. Don't talk about yourself, let others talk about you. I mean, that's, again, um, related to blogger relations, influencer relations, try to get people to talk about you. It's always nicer. Instead of hard telling your message, try to get people to talk about you. Like, for example, um, I think Pascal Smet uh, talked about uh, your, the, the, bike, uh, the, the, the bike app that you, you provided. I mean, it's always nicer that there's already a sort of soft layer of communication and that you can then tap into with your uh, hard selling, uh, hard selling propositions. Now, differ differentiate your content. Going live is a is a very good idea nowadays. I think for life as well today. Um, I mean, it's just a good good way to get uh, people to to reach people organically. Um, that's now the way it works. Uh, definitely on on Facebook, Periscope, but also YouTube. Create small infographics, info visuals, uh, with easily. Uh, consumable content. Nobody likes PDFs. People like bullet points. People like uh, things that are that they that they can immediately relate to. Um, I mean, you ha you only have a couple of seconds on a timeline, so make use of it. Uh, animations. If there are any animators here, uh, help your colleagues or help your uh, your communication people to, you know, translate difficult conceptual messages into understandable stuff. Video. And of course, long reads can always work, but that would be then derived from the snack towards the main meal. Repurpose content. People always think, okay, we've made a video and that's it, but you can do way more with that one video. Uh, you can make small gifts uh, from it. You can make short videos, short quotes, short snaps. Uh, you can have a still, make a still from a video and um, write a quote on it or uh, <laughs> Write a, write a nice headline on it. So don't only, never settle for that one product only. I'm sure that you can, with, <coughs> with one, one product, you can make more, uh, more than one um, repurposed uh, content ideas. And also act, uh, do it. Eh? Line up your preferred media to work on. Identify actions uh, within your team. Work on concepts and messages, again, per medium, per audience. Every audience is different, uh, whether it's for old people, young people, business people. Try to differentiate your, your, your message and make a timeline with short and long communication um, and long-term communication ideas and content. And of, course, and of course, give responsibilities. I usually see in, um, even in agencies that people still think in silos. Uh, you're the communications guy, you're the, um, you're the coder, and uh, you're the IT guy. But I think the more you work together, the more you give responsibilities to other people, they can also think about concepts, about um, new ways of communicating, new ways of getting your message across. So don't only give everything to the communications guy or to the guy who has studied uh, communication sciences. I'm sure that a video guy can also think about uh, a snappy headline or a creative uh, infographic idea. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, always keep your goals in mind in the creative process. Now, circles almost uh, round. Huh? React, react to media coverage. Monitor the media, monitor social media, monitor social mentions. Get feedback from users. Uh, maybe your, your game creators or your pain relievers weren't that effective in the end. And look, look for potential hooks to communicate in. I mean, if in September there's a week of mobility, I'm always referring to mobility, as you can see. Uh, in September is a week of mobility. Try to be ready to communicate your app during that week. Look for a hook to communicate your, your content in. And of course, change your product and your communication accordingly when you get that feedback from users. When you see that there's a spike of interest in a certain, yeah, in a certain um, issue or in a certain uh, new communication tool, then try to hook your, your own products into that. And of course, the title was Storytelling. And I just told you something about communication strategy, which is great. Here's a surprise. I have an example of storytelling. Um, this is pixelated, but I have to be So does anyone know Young Talent in Action? Cool, great. So let's tell the story. Um, it's, um, it's a scheme organized by the Enterprise Federation of Enterprises of Belgium to get people, to get young people to relate more to the, to the working place. Um, to bridge the gap between skills, education, and the working environment today. And they're organizing uh, an event here in October in, in Brussels, in the Beaux-Arts. And it was quite, quite clear from the start that we had to, yeah, the, clear, the, the goals were clear, get people to, to come to the event. Um, but then the persona were different because we wanted business people to come to exchange views with young people. And of course, young people, as such, between 16 and 27, to come and visit uh, and talk to talk to experts, talk to um, talk to business owners, talk to politicians about um, you know about being young, being uh, you know being still studying and not knowing really what to do. And then we came up with uh, with persona, and of course, with uh, with 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 messages accordingly. And the persona were were clear it was either young people studying, either starting their own business or, or still at school, and uh, business, business owners, HR directors, and so on. And the journey that HR directors are, are for example, taking is uh, when they look for content or when they, uh, where, they, where they consume content is in magazines like HR Square or uh, LinkedIn, for example, and the journey of young people is social media. So all, all social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, and so on. And of course, websites that relate to young people. Um, we'll see the outcome, the, 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 we'll see the outcome, of course, in, um, in, in October. But the, the goal is to get 2,000 people uh, to come to the event. We're at 1,000 youngsters right now. So you're always welcome to join in as well. But, um, you know, Talking about this, this, this journey and this, this ownership and the way of storytelling is that we made an animation, for example, where we gave the floor to youngsters. So we asked 500 youngsters, what's your opinion about the workforce today? What's your opinion about education today? So we gave them the floor and made an animation about it. So we turned stuff around. We didn't just top down and say, oh, we think that youngsters need this and that and this and this and that. But we listened to them and let them um, say stuff. We also made a, a small video, which, we, which you can find on the Young Talent Connection uh, platform, where we uh, worked with the real ambassadors, because they also have an ambassador scheme, the Young Talent in Action ambassadors, where we put them uh, forward as actors uh, in, uh, in, a small, um, in a small commercial where we invited people to come and listen uh, to, to youngsters and, 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 and yeah, you know, what they care about today. You can also find them in their user journey on website uh, Guido. We had a, and we still have a, a banner running. Um, I guess many students know Guido magazine, for example. So the user journey has been accomplished already, I think. And then, of course, to have this sort of soft, 
storytelling, uh, instead of only talking about the event, join us, join us, join us, uh, we're creating blog posts um, to get people to either um, just read some tips from CEOs or from, uh, from companies or from uh, politicians, uh, but also to, to stay informed um, about what's happening in the event. So again, we're trying to soft story tell, let's say, uh, things related to the event, but not directly hard selling that you should come, come, come to the event. Could also just be about tips uh, for for a future uh, employee. And then of course, on the other side of the user journey, um, we are, we change our, our messaging towards business owners and HR, HR directors, asking them what will convince you uh, in youngsters today. What will convince you to hire them today? Get to know them during during the event. <coughs> and of course, one of our USPs, let's say, during the event is a keynote speech by the HR director of Facebook, which is cool for youngsters and, of course, also interesting for um, you know people working in HR, for example, because they get to know how a, a massive company nowadays is being managed very horizontally and from a different point of view um, in, in in this kind of fast changing. Uh, and uh, business environment. Voila. If you're in a young talent in action, you can, uh, of course, join it. And that's it for me today. If you have any questions, you can always let me know. Tweet, LinkedIn, Facebook, email me, whatever. Or talk to me directly. It's always nice. Thanks. Are there any questions for Quinton? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, tomorrow we have our demo day, and all students will present their projects to the, to the audience. Um, it will be one big marketplace, but are there any things that you would recommend to students to, like, um, best practices to sell their stories to, uh, to SMB? Well, I, I think if it's a big marketplace, stand out with, uh, with branding, I would say. Or give some, some small goodies away. Uh, I mean, Try to be as surprising and as um, and as uh, you know as interesting as possible from a visual point of view. Because they won't talk to you in the beginning, but they might like you because you're either handing out smarties or uh, you just have a nice and cool T-shirt or a cool banner uh, to, to showcase. So, I mean, the, the first impression would be the would be the most important. The Demo is tomorrow at 2 p.m. I think. Um, we probably still want to get more people there. Um, there's not much time left, but what do you think we should still do to, to get some more people to come to our booth? Um, I would, for example, record a video with a 15 or 20 second pitch by every, by every group and convince people to come by just pitching in front of the camera for 15 or 20 seconds yeah. and then maybe boost it with some advertising or try to find some relevant groups to post it to because I think if you're in the picture it will always be nicer than if someone else talks about you for this for this case yeah. because they people will relate to you because you're young and dynamic and active uh, you said in the beginning what you are you communication advisor also you you have a, a huge number of interesting topics etc but at the same time, there is a lot of people who are simply illiterate. And normally, it's the local authority who should uh, not pretend that everything is okay, but try to make a communication campaign, popularizing, repopularizing the reading. There is a book box with Boata Libre, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, how do you see it if you already felt about it? How to, let's say, popularize, repopularize the European project and the intelligence, the reading, etc. Et I think um, definitely for a European project, um, Europe is so diverse that one message, one message only won't work. Also, humor doesn't work the same in, in different countries. So what I've been working on is, is just local communication. I think the, the most obvious thing and, and common sense that you have to think about is if there is a communication about maritime affairs, then make sure to communicate it only to those countries who have a sea. Those who don't have a sea, 
are they really interested in it? Would, would they care? So I mean, local communication depends on relevancy, speaking the same language, and tailoring your message towards those communities, and using those influencers, those third parties, to talk about you by doing online PR, offline PR, and getting, you know, making, building um, relationships that help to get your message across, not only to the same bubbles all the time, but also to those bubbles that are related to Europe, but also related to tech, to environment, um, to, to water, to whatever. So I think that's, that's one of the main advice I would give just from the top of my head, if that answers your question. The, I think the, the main thing is to uh, keep peace now, to complete the investment, etc., etc. And uh, to understand each other, there is uh, some populist, uh, let's say, false contradiction, then everyone thinks what he is better, etc. But finally, even everyone do not know what in geology behind that his height means. Yeah. And so this is why I think should be best to promote intelligence, reading, so people not follow the some cliche, negative cliches, etc. So it may be not the topic exactly. Well, I'd be interested to have some, if you have some articles or, okay. or, or it'd be nice to, to read about it or to okay. get your info. We're talking with clients, customers, uh, what's a good way to separate the technical details of your work with the commercial goods, like I would say. Mm -hmm. Because often you want to include the technical details, but it's difficult. If you only focus on, on the pitch, mm -hmm. usually it's just uh, a sales pitch without any depth. I think um, a sales pitch, and then I, I think I, I mean, it's a difficult one indeed, but try to keep it as already specific and relevant as possible towards your 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 potential client. If it's the same sales pitch that you're doing all over and all over again, then people won't care. But if you already include some examples or some interesting things that you can apply for that one client only, then I think the technical aspects and how to do it will come later. Make them dream first about what you can do for them. Already provide a logo, already provide a sort of storyboard of your of the story that you want to be telling for them in a video for example and then go your second step should be okay we're going to do it this and this and this and this and this and that way but you're covered with us because we have those people in house and we can help you and how, how do you handle it in the follow-up because after the customer and the whole project then usually there's a follow-up talk or documentation or whatever is it a better idea to separate the general introduction with technical details or is it better to it depends a bit on, on what project you're, you're referring to right now. Because what for you, what's for you a technical? What's for you technical? Uh, in the context of our project, we have the like data. Mm -hmm. um, how we compare all the data and how we gather the data. I think that's too technical for our clients. To I think so as well. I think you should. I think you should be focusing on the relevancy for the end user and how how you got to it technically. You may present it as in an annex for people who are really interested in it, but probably people from the administration are probably not really interested in how you got to it in, a, in technical terms. It's how useful those data are for the end user, I think, and that's what you have to be focusing on. Sorry. <laughs> cool. One more question. So, Quinton. Cool. So, on behalf of all students, thank ah, you very nice. much. Uh, thank you. This is for you. Great. Cool. <laughs>